The World Resources Simulation Center will be an immersive visualization environment where the critical issues of our time are displayed and future options can be simulated. It is a place where policymakers, business leaders, and civil society can literally see the global trends that got us to where we are today and compare choices for the future. In early June of 2009, we brought together 46 leaders in GIS mapping and comprehensive thinking to test out the concept. What we'd like to have you see is that these issues are all interconnected. Nothing is independent anymore, that they're all interrelated, and that this is a place that we can actually see that interrelationship and hopefully down the road make more sustainable decisions and act on them quicker. Uh, clearly there's a number of major crises in the world right now, and uh, I don't think we have the luxury of time anymore. I think there needs to be an accelerator. And I'd like to think that we're going to be testing out an accelerator here for the next couple of days. Not siloized, not issue by issue, but interconnected issues altogether. For our prototype design event, we used projectors and laminated maps to imitate the digitized high-tech interior of the World Resources Simulation Center. In three simulations over two days, we examined issues of population demographics, energy and climate, clean water and the oceans on the global, national and regional levels, pushing our experts to find the best visual data and analysis on these topics. Our European and, and North US area has more water supply accessibility. And then the other way to look at this would be in a three-dimensional perspective. Uh, with, with the, the um, trend of being able to look at this uh, with a three-dimensional. Now, the one thing I would say is if I could get time series and be able to look at this in terms of how these, these bars are going up and down over time, that would be a, a really cool visual model that I would love to be able to do. So we're working on it. What we're, what we're pointing out here is the fact that our marine ecology uh, is based upon a very, very fragile ecosystem where basically the top four inches of the oceans produce all the phytoplankton plankton that then drives the krill production, which is the basis of the food chain. Four inches of the world's ocean. Very, very uh, important for yeah, like storm surges during hurricanes. You can watch your, your stream flow back up. You can uh, use this for planning of eva evacuations. Uh, you can overlay these data sets into your own GIS system and do uh, flood modeling uh, and quickly have your EOC, Emergency Operations Center, decide where to uh, start uh, moving uh, Red Cross folks in or the police for evacuations. And, and John, are these real time? This is uh, all real time. It automatically up updates in Google Earth. And this one is animated to show you the increase in the impervious surface, which is what I was talking about. And the consequences for all the mares in the area is enormous because they've all had to deal with the runoff from this huge increase in impervious surface. And there's now a lot of requirements on developers to include a flood abatement. If current trends continue, it's going to be hotter and drier. We're going to have a higher sea level to be a water shortage, all the stuff we've talked about. What are we going to do about it? This is what it meant on a personal level. So in, in uh, 2006 or so, if we converted all our emissions to a per capita basis, we were emitting 12 metric tons per person. And by 2020, we had to get to eight metric tons per person. And we had to then look towards getting to one metric ton per person by 2050. So I think that's part of our challenge is to curate an interesting, palatable story for the people who matter, people who can make the difference. Working relationships were forged across fields of specialty. Entrepreneurs interacted with geographers. Computer experts shared with social scientists. Each brought new insights and ideas into the solution process. By bringing us all together under one roof, we experience the importance of face-to-face -face interaction 
in the processes of collaboration and cooperation. But collaboration is actually a third way where I take your ideas and my ideas and we actually co-create a third way that neither of us thought about. So the idea of collaboration is that it's a co-creative exercise that means that I have both assert myself and listen to you. So I'm starting to see that that's what sustainability really is, is about collaboration. One was the realization that you cannot just work at a neighborhood level or a regional, local, that you, that you must work at multiple scales. That some issues, as we saw in the policies here, are national in scope, others are state, others are local. And so uh, we started out computationally by taking all census block groups in the U.S., all 200,000 of them, and saying, well, we have to consider the reality of climate, but we also have to consider the reality of demography, land use, land cover, soil, geology, and have an integrated picture of all of that reality for all of the U.S., and down to the neighborhood levels. It's a huge problem because the population is not motivated. He's, and he said our data and congressional data shows that, that worry about climate change isn't even on the top ten of, of what people care about. So for our mayors, this is a big issue because they're political creatures. And so uh, the question is, are mayors responsive to the population or mayors lead? If you can't inspire your population and you can't scare them, then you just have to go lead like hurricanes stacked up off the coast, the financial meltdown is just one. But we've got peak oil and peak water and biodiversity and uh, refugee crises. And, you know, the list can go on very long. There's a lot of stuff coming at us. We don't know exactly what, when, or how. And our job, one of our jobs, is to build the capacity of the human experiment to respond effectively and anticipatorily to these. The stuff that we're talking about building here, the metabolic dashboards, the World Resources Simulation Center, are the next generation of the council fire. It's an opportunity for people to sit around a fire, in this case the cold fire on these screens, gaze into it together and have a different kind of conversation together than we would have had before. What if we had that facility now, hooked up to the Cal IT2 supercomputers, for example, so all of the creative ideas in this room, we could plug it in as variables and then run the model and see what the results are. I mean, that would be the outcome. So ordinary people could actually tangibly work with the simulation model. I think we all agree in the room that the planet's in really dangerous shape, and that this approach, the World Resource Center, is a very, very promising and highly leveraged um, methodology, as well as a facility, to improve the quality of life for the entire planet. The WRSC was originally proposed by visionary engineer R. Buckminster Fuller before today's technology was available. Now, the urgency of our multiple world crises calls for a place where thoughtful, committed global thinkers can convene to work together on the important issues of our time.